Hello and howdy. Welcome everyone to another amazing Angular Air. Today with me, I have Matthew Reigler. Matthew, how are you doing? Welcome I'm to the show. Fine. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for having me. I'm so grateful to be with you. And I I heard that you're in Berlin, so it's 6 p.m. Uh, yes, I'm in Berlin for the weekend. Enjoy the weekend after uh, after a, 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 an amazing week uh, in uh, in Poland. I was well, at the NG Poland conference. Oh my goodness! Well, thank you for joining us so late your time. And I want to introduce our panelists that are here with us. We have Mike. Hi, Mike. How are you doing? Uh, not too bad. Happy to be here, hanging out. Excellent. And we also have Justin. How are you doing, Justin? Hey, doing good. Doing good. Excellent. So tell us, Matthew, was NG Poland amazing? I was like super, jeal was super jealous. Awesome. It was awesome. So many developers, so many people to talk to. The panelists were awesome. We got the core team also. Huge success, I'd say. Huge success. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. Well, I know there was a couple topics we wanted to talk about today. Um, I Talking about you as a contributor, how people mm -hmm. can contribute can contribute and then maybe even a little bit about animation lazy loading so exactly and excellent. you'll see excellent so how long have you been contributing when did you when did you get started how did started that a year ago it was uh, uh, my first pr i opened it it was november i looked it a few days ago it was november 2nd so it was only a year ago. That's it awesome was only a year ago and i just looked at the, at the statistics like uh, I'm like the biggest contributor in terms of just comments, not features, just comments. Because at the <laughs> beginning, I was uh, really doing what? Uh, a, a bit of documentation and let's say cut cleaning, the easy stuff. <laughs> uh, I, honestly, the first time I, I like made a PR, it was like three different versions of like, n you didn't get the formatting correct. <laughs> So I honestly, that. that can be one of the most daunting parts of like, I just don't want them to laugh at my ideas. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us, do we just share your screen? Where should we start uh, today? Uh, I can I, first tell and I'll share my screen after that. If you want, I will tell a bit uh, of the story. Like um, like you said, sometimes it can be hard to to start contributing to, mm -hmm. to, to, to a, a big framework like Angular. And... Even if it's scary, there is some easy way to start uh, contributing. For example, um, documentation. Everyone can edit uh, a documentation and let's say fix a typo. Right now, we we um, we just released the, the new documentation uh, Angular.dev. Have you have you seen it? Have mm. you played with, uh, with it a bit? I've created yeah. multiple issues with it. <laughs> yes, exactly. And you no, know I, I'm a big fan though. Did not mean yeah. that in a bad way. It's just no, 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 I no. love it so much. I will go over. With a fine tooth comb until and it, they're and all it's gone. awesome that people uh, <laughs> open the, the 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 issues that mean they care about this project and they mm -hmm. want to improve it, and we've got so much issue that's been opened because it's a bad ad hoc. It's a lot of work that's been done, but still a lot of work to do, and we've been grateful that people uh, give us the, the 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 issues they see, and what's even better. I haven't seen in a long long time so much contribution from outside people that never contributed you know you can directly see on on github uh, if um a contributor is like a new one it's like landing his first pr and it's great to see that much people willing to spend time uh to open the pr it isn't maybe straightforward for everyone if you're not used to it like for example do a change need to do a second one you have two comments but we got some strict rules to have a very clean git tree Mm -hmm. So a commit tree. So for example, you need to be able to to amend your comments, to rebase interactively, et cetera, et cetera. But and also have the um, we have some commit rules. For example, commit messages, standardization. When you edit the docs, maybe uh, you, you, if you did some uh, some PRs, you, you know how it works. So it can be a bit a bit scary for for beginners. Mm -hmm. And for example, I've been like advocating, helping people uh, by giving them easy issues. Uh, uh, I can show you, for example, um, I'll share my screen. If you go on the Angular repo uh, right now, you see we have uh, 1,400 uh, yeah, 1, uh, issues. And some of them are labeled good first issue help wanted. Good first issue, it's the, the issues that we um, in the team consider are really easy 
uh, it's a low barrier, let's say, low barrier um, issues that everybody can take if they're willing to spend some time to uh, make the change and submit the PR and uh, maybe uh, listen to, to the comments that have been made and edit uh, the, the comment. And we also have the next one that is help wanted that we consider that the community can help the team uh, work on it. Uh, like it's not high priority, but uh, let's say it's much appreciated. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's the first entry point, I'd say. And I've been regularly tweeting some issues like that uh, to, to show to people that if you want to start right now, uh, here's an easy one and I will help you land them. Because I think the hardest part is actually uh, starting. And like I said, I started almost uh, yeah, uh, a year ago. And how did I start? Uh, that's actually the funny stuff. If I go back, for example, I see my first PR. It was, uh, I remember it was a day at work. I was bored. It was a slow day. And I just wanted to do something <laughs> of my day. You know how it works. I wanted to do something in my day, so I uh, was. I don't. I didn't remember why I had the Angular repo uh, uh, cloned on my computer, and I was looking some code just, just like wandering, like you, you, you walk in a city you don't know, and etc. You're looking at code, and I stumble upon. Uh, need to check closed. I stumble upon uh, some, um, uh, let's say, um, something that was kind of wandering me. Why did we have such a complex selector on a uh, on a um, on a directive, mm. the router link directive? Everybody knows it. Everybody's using it. You know, it's one for the router. If you want a link uh, on a button, for example, to change the page, and it was due to refactoring. So I, I did see that this doesn't make sense anymore, right? So I, I did just remove the useless part of the selector, submitted a PR, and like it took i don't remember submitted it on november 2nd 2022 and it was merged like five days later like i said i had a comment from the team because i needed to update that are here to help us um let's say track uh, what we call the uh, api surface it's like all the apis that are public and that we want to expose to the, to the developers. And we have a file that we update every time we create or modify one API. So that's, um, that's, um, that's how it started for me. Like the first advice I would say, be curious and be willing to like spend some time to start something. You can uh, either look at the easy low barrier issues or just wander on the on the code base like you would do, for example, at work. When mm -hmm. you want to know how it works, just look at it. But for something like that, I would see that yeah. and I'd be like, that's a weird selector. But I would never in a million years touch it or offer a, because I would assume that these really smart people who wrote the framework had a reason for the absurdness of that. Like I would never assume like it was leftover cruft. I would yeah. assume it was there on purpose. Don't touch it like <laughs> yeah uh, and i totally understand that maybe that's the part of having experience will help you get the confidence to uh understand that this might be something a bit weird so you can mm -hmm. you can investigate I, I was also like maybe it has a there was a reason so i did check why it was there mm -hmm. I checked the, the file history and you can see what changed. And I, I remember, and I just saw that there was um, a previous uh, um, direct directive that was deprecated. And it was because of that, that the selector uh, could be changed. And it's just, let's say, really be curious. By being curious, you can maybe find something. But of course, uh, it can be hard. And, and of course, the people that write Angular, they are... Yeah, they're smart, of course, but sometimes they forget something. But Alyssa, you mentioned that that is intimidating to you to go yeah. in and say, hey, I'm going to go in and change somebody's issues. That's not always the point of entry of saying, hey, I'm going to go find something within the framework that I want to mm -hmm. do. By starting with the help wanted or good mm -hmm. first issue, you're starting from somebody requesting something that's already been discussed. Yeah. And then you're just looking at how do I implement or how do I make that particular change versus 
well, what change should I make? That's kind of a guide to say, mm -hmm. hey, this is where you should start uh, within mm -hmm. the framework. So yeah. I, I saw those good, like good first issue tags and other tags um, recently with like creating issues for angular.dev, but I didn't know what they meant. Like I assumed it was like, it's that person's good first issue. Like they're giving him a good job or something. Like I didn't know. Uh, is there like a guide? Like, have you seen that? Have you seen if I go <laughs> back to the, to the issues, there is a, a small tooltip on it. Uh, we don't, ah. don't <laughs> Issue that is suitable for first time contributors often a documentation issue. And it's true, it's mostly documentation issue that we consider really easy. For example, a typo, a missing word, double word, etc. etc. And the help wanted also is clear. Help wanted is an issue that's suitable for community contributor based on its complexity scope. It means that the scope is really small and the complexity is really low. Yeah, and a quick uh, side note for people who aren't necessarily familiar with GitHub as yeah. a website. If you go and uh, hit the label sure. drop down, you uh, can filter just on that particular label. I mean, you can search within there too. Uh, for, search for first. Yeah. For good the, the alternative being uh, you can directly check all the labels on the on a repo and you'll see all the labels that's available on it. And you can filter and uh, we say good. <laughs> first issue here it is, is this a thing with, that most people do like do most uh, outside of angular do most of them have tags like good ah, yes um a, a a good let's say um if the re repo is well maintained and there is some kind of communication and it's not like just a single person working on its own when it's like a team that also wants to communicate with its community uh that it's something they will uh very really often see hmm. So I have a couple questions and I yeah. don't know where to start and I don't want to overwhelm you. So like one, <laughs> the naming convention with um, things like docs, docs yeah. infra, like they've yeah. got all these like on those, that was like daunting to me because I was like, hmm. I will show, I will show it a bit to you. So for example, I've got an example here uh, and I was also open um, here, the contributing uh, document. It's a, a Markdown file that's within the repo and it's at the root of the repo. So you can access uh, here directly and it helps you how to start, let's say, contributing to the, to the, to the framework. Got a question or problem, found a bug, etc. missing a feature. There's all the links that send you to the right direction. Uh, if you want some help, there's Stack Overflow, there's Discord, uh, the Discord server where the community answers to you, etc. And we have, for example, like you said, for um, for the PR, we have uh, different categories, and it starts with a type. Every PR has a type. For example, it's either uh, a change for the docs, it's a feature, a fix, a perf improvement, a refactoring, some tests you're adding on the on the on the code base. Build and CI are more like technical issues. Most of the time, it isn't the, the community that's working on it. It's more the team uh, that's doing the tooling. And most of the community PRs are on the docs. And the second part is the scope. For example, for the docs, the scope isn't necessary. But like you said, sometimes we have the scope that is um, doc infra. And we have let's say two, two types of uh, contribution to the doc, uh, documentation. It's either you contribute to the content or you contribute to the app itself. Because if you go, for example, on angular.dev, you will see that angular.dev is an Angular application. For example, here we have the doc is built with 1700RC1. So it means that behind the doc, behind just the content, there is an app that ne uh, needs sometimes uh, maintenance, some updates, some bug fixes. That's why we have on one side doc infra and on the other side, just docs for just the content for the, for the community, for example. Mm. And for the other PRs, like you say, uh, most of the packages have their own scope. For example, when you develop with Angular, you know the animation, animation package, common, Compiler, compiler, CLI, core elements, form, HTTP, blah, 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 router, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And some in the last ones on our packages is more technical for, for the team because having all these uh, information in the commits messages helps you maintain uh, your code base, helps you find the reason 
why something was introduced, when, et cetera, et cetera. We, uh, I find that the team is doing a wonderful work. When you look at the commit tree, you can find exactly what happened, for what reason, who, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Like just opening the different comments we had on the, on the repo, for example, we had like uh, 10 that were merged today, a bit more yesterday, a lot of Docs, 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 etc. So we see what happens for what reason, who, and that helps us maintain the code base in a really sane manner and find, for whatever reason, some code has been introduced and when, for example. So yeah, I had yes, one more please. question about the upcoming Angular Dev merge. So yeah. you have Angular.io and you have Angular.dev, and they're all going to be under. Angular slash Angular. So will there be like, when you're creating PRs or like you're opening issues, is there like a new tag and you have to specify which one it's for? Um, no, it's just docs. But uh, if you look at the issues uh, or the PRs, we tag them. For example, this one is a doc for a, a Angular.dev. We call it a dev. Okay. And the other one, we call it IO for Angular.io. Okay. A dev, Angular.dev, and IO. And so we tag everything. So we know, for example, which issue is for what. Okay. And on the PR, I think we have it also mostly docs, or for example, when it's uh, other packages for core, etc. So this one, for example, it's a PR. I think that it has probably two comments, one for ADEV, one for AO. Oh, um... it's in, all in the same one, but it's not a problem. It's still a doc. Okay. And for example, here it updated a part for the compiler CLI, so we accept also that the scope is for the compiler. So. This is this is it, I think, for the uh, yeah. Perfect. I think one of the things that you mentioned earlier was the fact that like getting started, right, for your very first yeah. one, there's all this um, process that you have to go through, right? How yeah. do you make a, a branch? How do you make a PR? Mm -hmm. um, how do you do that commit message, right? Um, all of those things that you kind of need to learn before you really yeah. even start contributing, and so taking something that's really simple as a contribution, like a little sm minor change, gives you that opportunity to learn that process and mm -hmm. get it down, right? Without mm -hmm. the complexity of also trying to solve a problem at the same time, right? Um, so I think like that's what I kind of look for when I start contributing to a new spot is to find something simple that gives me the ability to learn the process and get that down and get a feel for it. And then from there, you're off and running. Mm -hmm. uh, like you said, it's an easy process, but I'd say it's right now it's a process you see Everywhere you start working, if you are a bit serious about your engineering, you have the PRs, you open a PR for your code, and you mention, for example, a ticket you're working on, etc. It should be, it's one of the basics, I, I'd say. Of course, if you don't know that, it's going to be a bit hard, of course. But there is a doc, and there are some people on the team, like when I say some, it's everybody. Um, at the beginning, I can say I was scared when I opened a PR. Because I, I was always scared to be some, uh, to do something wrong, etc. Without knowing, for example, uh, sometimes I was, uh, did not know which command to run, for example, um, to update, like I said, the, the files we have to, to, to track the, 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 the API surface, etc. But the team has been so welcoming and they working, I think, really hard on it to be welcoming and helping everybody, newcomers, experts, everybody to improve the tool we love because that's it in the end uh everyone every small pr if it's an improvement the team will take it if we'll also put the effort to follow the basic rules there are there are like i said comic messages and the few files we we want what are the things on that um, cons like the concern of, oh my gosh, I'm nervous about committing. What am I going to do? Mm -hmm. Right. I, I kind of always try to tell myself and lean back to the fact, like, okay, w I've got Git as my friend, right? Like mm -hmm. I'm making a, a feature branch. Like it's not going directly into their main branch, right? It, it has to get approved and, and yes. kind of eyes on it. So I can do kind of whatever I want to do and mess up yes. or, or experience uh, things. And, and, and like, it's just safe. I'm not going to be messing something there's up. There's no gonna risk. Look at, yeah. Yeah. And and since it's it's a it's a public repo, but you don't have the right on it, the first thing you're gonna need to do is create a fork. For this, yeah, GitHub is making it really easy. It creates everything for you. And then when you have your fork on your machine, you can just um, you create your branch, 
you, you write some comic message. Even it's even if it's wrong, you start something, you open the PR, and then the team comes back to you. The first thing they try to see if the content is good. Then if it's good, okay, next step, let's look at all the checks we need. Uh, are the linters running? Uh, part of the linter is the the, the the script that checks the comic message, uh, message, for example. So every step. You, the, the, the developer will feel that it goes closer to closer to closer to the merge. And it can be easy and quite fast. When I look at my PR, the, the, the first change I made, in five days, it was merged. And sometimes, sometimes, sometimes you can have changes that look actually easy. For example, uh, do you know the, um, uh, the method at we, uh, we have now on the on array? Mm. It returns either the object at index or undefined. And we have, I think, the same method on the form array, but there was a typing issue. It only returned the type and not undefined. And I wanted to make the change, and there it started, I think, one of my biggest problems at the beginning. Uh, the change, everybody can see it, do it really easy, but the problem are also the impact. Every change like that is a breaking change. And we all know it. We don't like breaking changes when we update our Angular. And the Angular team has been very conscious about it to not introduce breaking change without um, a tool that helps the developer mitigate the breaking change. We have been doing ng update. ng update is like um, godsend, I'd say almost, mm. <laughs> because because uh, the team has been working a lot on uh, what they call the schematics. It's the script that are running when you're migrating some code, and every time we introduce a breaking change, there needs to be a schematic. And writing a schematic is gonna be a lot more complicated than just changing a type in one file. Mm. And that's maybe sometimes it can. Look easy, but it isn't. And <laughs> I don't think maybe... anyone's ever put the word easy and schematic together. Um, <laughs> no, no, definitely. Too, Mike? definitely. So, so uh, it's really that um, changes can look easy, but if it introduces a breaking change, it's a whole other level. And that's maybe my first warning. If you want to do a change, look at something that's not a breaking change. Or um, I'm not saying it's undoable but you're going to have a hard time for first PR or second PR. And I think, uh, for example, I had one merge for V17 that was a, a PR that was open for at least eight or nine months. Oh, Something wow. that I wrote almost at the start, but I wasn't conscious about all these issues and the fact that the team doesn't want to break something because they break some other people's code, but they also break their own code. The Angular team is responsible to fix every uh, breaking change they do on the Google monorepo on G3. So imagine when you make one change and there is like 50,000 files that you need to modify, it's better to have the uh, schematics to help you doing that. So that's the, 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 the first, let's say, a bit scary part. But you can do a lot more easier. Um, I started with the good issue. Uh, maybe my case, uh, ra uh, randomly wander, uh, wander, uh, walking uh, uh, in the code base doesn't happen to a lot of people. But I think the second easiest entry point is you have a bug and you want to fix it. For example, uh, you open the bug, you open an issue, the team is say, OK, it's a bug. Uh, you have a repro, we acknowledge it. Maybe sometimes they even say, oh, it could be fixed easily, but uh, we don't have to forget that they have uh, sometimes other priorities. They got a lot of work and sometimes they do not have the time to fix your issue if it's like a minor bug. So maybe that's the opportunity for people that have a bit of experience. You have a bug, you have a repro, let's try your luck and try to fix it yourself. Yeah. You mentioned that the whole process is pretty guided and pretty well documented. And you mm -hmm. mentioned the contributing markdown file that's within there. Yeah. The, the other one that I find extremely helpful is that, okay, you found an issue. You want to be able to work on it. I need to be able to make some code changes. How do I go about doing that? 
And we talked about forking and cloning that locally mm -hmm. and be able to create your own branch. But how do you verify that the change you're making actually works? There's another file under the docs folder called developer.markdown, which talks about setting up your environment so that you can run your tests and install any prerequisite software or anything else so that your environment is set up to be able to make to do that development. Yeah, it's a great uh, it's a great question you're you're asking because that was going to be my next topic. Uh, what I love uh, in the Angular code base, it's the number of unit tests there is and integration tests. The team has put so much effort into this; it's almost comfortable to try to bug fix something because the the coverage is here to help you. Uh, let's say uh, watch your back there is a really low chance that you will break something. So knowing that, what will you do? Some people that quite a bit experience will do what we call a TDD, so test-driven development. So the best thing is find uh, the, the correct testing file where you want to introduce a test that represents you or your bug. So you write a broken test and from this point, you can try to fix your bug by trying to fix your test. And like you said, uh, the test is the best starting point. And if you have the starting point in the test, that's how I worked at the beginning, because let's be honest, the code base is quite huge. Um, I will just go show you, uh, when you go to the packages uh, directory, you got all the packages that are uh, the ones that land on the, on the NPM. So where do you start when you have a bug? For example, when it's a four, you know it's going to be here. But sometimes it's a bug more deeper. And when it's in core and in core, it's, I think, the biggest package with the compiler. Uh, so it's going to be hard to find where to do the changes. And starting by writing a test when you have found the file in which it should land, you will be able to go up the code stack and look where actually the bug happens and it will help you find the origin of the code that triggers uh, your issue. So the tests are your friend. And I'm saying uh, as someone who for, let's say, almost all my career, I hated to write tests. Uh, when you do mostly front-end tests, uh, the, the most test, the most useful test you have, it's the UI test and they break so fast and they have not always a lot of value and I hated them. But since I've started contributing to the Angular framework, I find them so useful. I, I cannot today open a PR uh, with, um, with a feature or a, a, a bug fix or a small update without writing tests before and Let's say it will watch my back uh, in the future or, or even better, someone else's back. Because when you write something, when you work on a big project, on a big OSS project like Angular, you will probably never meet the guy or the girl that's going to read uh, the code you wrote. So you, you, we need to be conscious to, to help the next developer that's going to uh, work on the code you wrote. And that's where also uh, commenting is going to be really important. And I've got to mention uh, most of the time, it's Andrew Kushnir from the course team. He's having so much great, uh, let's say, um, suggestion on comments, how to make the code even more clear uh, with the uh, insightful comments, uh, mindful comments uh, uh, at the right place in the code. So you're saying don't just like paragraphs of comments. <laughs> it could be paragraph if it's necessary, but it's not the comments like you say. Uh, if you do uh, x plus one, you're not uh, writing incrementing that we can read that. But for example, <laughs> if you have to introduce some work around, uh, so if you have to introduce something that doesn't look straightforward, writing comment. Why are you doing this? For example, which issue it fixes, mm -hmm. or if like. Um, 
you could also introduce a to do if if it's something that's we're waiting for an update for example sometimes bugs happen because of dependencies and you introduce the workaround so you want to mention directly in the code not not only in the um, commit message commit message is also important but having it in the code will help the next developer that comes reading this uh it will help him understand what happens uh because that is also also something that i've learned uh over the time it's that code is more read than written so please try to help the next person that's going to read your code what do you think about that yeah you know this is another thing that i think that highlights the benefit of of this contribution right is this opportunity for a lot of devs that maybe work on their code solo right or building something mm -hmm. solo and they haven't had that experience of working with other teammates or or larger code base or, or sharing that stuff this introduction also provides them an opportunity to learn how to do these things you just described right and that's starting to get that experience of, of working yeah. when you write code that that's going to impact other people that that read that code and have to work with it um, so it's another way to get that experience even if you don't have a job that you're working with multiple people or something yeah and you know what? You know what? That's exactly the the the, the topic uh, of a talk I want to give is how doing open source contribution will make you a better software engineer, not just the developer, but the engineer that's behind it. Because mm -hmm. it's not just writing code; it's all that's around and how make a project uh, uh, maintainable, uh, live a long time, etc. Because what's Amazing. When you look at the Angular report, so it started, I think, 2014, the first comments, and we are now almost 10 years. And I think in the time I've been almost everywhere, quite in, there is no dirty, new real, let's say, real dirty parts, because uh, people were put um, the effort, the work into having uh, a sane code base. And and having this, it's just, um, let me rephrase that. Um, working on such code bases will teach you so much about all the work that a software engineer does that will make you a better one. Do you, do you agree with that? No, do. absolutely. <laughs> um, the other thing is so, the idea of comments and code and what should be commented and what shouldn't be common isn't just for open source projects. It's for any project that you're working on. Yeah. yeah. Self-documenting code is the best documentation because it gets updated. So a function encapsulating something in a function that's well named that explains explicitly what is happening within there is better than a comment. Yeah, and it's co-located in the code because having a doc is good, but if the doc is, I don't know, somewhere on a on a gyro, on a confluence, it's good to have it, but it's even better to have it in the same place and even better that it's versioned with the code. So the, mm -hmm. the, the comments are updated with the code so you can even go in the history and that's what makes it great. It's having the, 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 the documentation with the, the version. Mm -hmm. um, it's the same thing when you look uh, actually at the at the, the real docs, the API docs we have on ADEV on, uh, or IAO. Um, we have one version for every Angular version. I don't know if anybody knows that, but for example, I can check v4.angular.io and boom, I can go to the documentation that was written. Uh, V4 is like uh, now, uh, what, seven years ago, eight years ago, something like that. A hot minute. <laughs> yeah. And, and um, probably the, not everybody knows that, but the Angular documentation is generated from the code source. So if I go on a dev, for example, angular.dev, I will show that to the people that doesn't know it. I go to wherever the API, I don't know. I go to K-frames. Uh, this phrase here, I'll just copy it. I have a, here, that's my Angular uh, fork I have on my on my PC. I look at the code. The sentence you have on the doc is the one that is in the code. So it means that the documentation is really linked to the current version of the code you're uh, you're, you're reading. So having the 
the code generated from your code and having the doc in the code makes everything versionable and you can go back in history and uh, and look uh, how it did look like a uh, few version few years uh, before also a great uh, great example of uh, how to 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 make a project um logo uh, let's say uh uh down uh with the with the ages because it happens really easily that with the ages the code becomes more and more complex and less maintainable and that's one of the kind of things that makes it at least maintain uh, a same level uh, of, of of complexity it's not degrading and that, and that co-location is really key right because it's just like our unit tests and things like that they're all kind of centered there so we make a change to that you know, code, then we know there's a couple things that we need to update along the way to keep everything in synergy. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. I guess I just don't understand how far back. So like, let's say that sentence you have there on keyframes yeah. in the next two versions, let's say we need to update that sentence. Yeah. Do we only update it in the latest or do we like make a PR for every single version no. that had it? Like, no, uh, every, most of the most of the, the the changes are made on the main branch. Uh, what uh, when um, when working for on the on the Angular repo, I will show it to you. Uh, all the changes are made directly to the main branch, but sometimes it targets you. They, they use the the target patch means it's going to be the next patch, so it's what's currently on the main branch. But it could happen sometimes that we have something that lines uh, lands uh, if i look at uh, we have a label that's called um lts so for example it happens sometimes that the team is landing a security patch for a, prev a previous version oh. and here for example we had the backport of a feature that landed in v15 if i remember correctly but was also landed in v13 and this one was tagged specifically and for example it's very specific cases. We target something else than um, than uh, the main branch. And if nice. I open it, I can see that it will target sixteen dot thirteen dot four. Okay, so only for very specific, very important yeah. reasons do you go back in time. Yeah, yeah. Most of the time, it's uh, uh, let's say more. Uh, yeah, most of the times it goes to the main branch, and it will also be. Uh, backported to another 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 branch. I will show you the, uh, actually how it looks like. For every version, there is a branch for every minor. For example, we just landed 17.0. There is a branch for this one. So, if ever we need to land something just for the latest 17.0, we can target this branch. If we want to do an LTS fix for the 16.2, we can target this branch. Or the 15.2, we target this branch. Uh, if I remember correctly, the Angular team supports uh, the two previous version, maybe three. I think it's in total 18 months of support, but only once uh, when a new major is released, it's only security uh, fixes, okay. uh, security issues. Uh, every feature uh, there is, it's very rare that a new feature lands uh, in a in a previous version. Uh, the only case I know it's the one I just showed. It was the the improvement that was made on the images, um, the ng uh, optimized image. Yeah, yeah. Because this work was done in collaboration with the Aurora team. Uh, I don't know if you know what the uh, the Aurora team is like a cross competence team that works closely also with the Chrome team. This uh, makes this makes a lot of sense that you would stick to the main one because in my head i'm imagining creating a pr for every previous version and yeah. i guess whenever a team does say like we support previous versions mm -hmm. uh it makes sense that it's for security like and yeah. not like all the docs every single feature will be maintained in the past ones so that that makes sense it's so much work it's not it's almost not worth it it's uh, worth it that to help more the the, the people to 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 update to the latest update. version. And that's why ng update. That's what's uh, funny. It's, um, let's say, the main keyword that the team wanted to share uh, uh, on the keynote. Uh, it was on, on Tuesday when we were doing the keynote um, and uh, at ng Poland. Mm -hmm. It's 
do ng update because it not only helps you to update your framework, but it will run the schematics and the schematics as well is going to migrate everything for you automatically and you won't have the breaking changes. Uh, you won't have to handle the breaking changes. They will be there, but the schematics will fix them for you like 95% of the total. Maybe sometimes you need to do some things manually, but if most is done by, uh, by a script, then it will ease the transitions between every every major. Because when you look at it, uh, Angular gets lots of updates. We've got one major every six months, two minor every two or three months, something like that. That's, it's a lot of updates. So it's good to help developers uh, stay on track, have updated uh, framework versions, versions and and have yeah uh, enjoy the, the latest features because every time when you see the um, all the new features we have v17 i'd like to say it, but it's one of the best version i've ever seen so <laughs> much, no, really have you seen all the features that, that they've been working on i feel like it's it's kind of weird though because we talk about the renaissance and all of these features but like 17 like it wasn't, they weren't all released in 17. I feel like the Renaissance really truly started in 14. And we like yeah, have been iterating true. and slowly oh. releasing and we're still iterating and slowly releasing. So it's yeah. kind of hard to like pinpoint, that's the version you need to be on. Like, ah. <laughs> well, while I, I totally agree that the Renaissance started with V14, was a standalone. But when you look like, look at V17, We've got the new builder. We've got the new syntax. We got the defer views. Uh, what do we have also? Um, we got lots of performance improvements. I don't remember that much amazing features in one major, but you're right. It's a renaissance. It started several versions ago, and it's not uh, and uh, finished yet because. Um, even, I know even the hydration like, things that we're setting up for the yeah, future and yeah, SSR yeah. things that we're, it's very, it's like, I don't know, it's it's hard to explain to people who aren't in the community, like on a regular basis, how exciting this is because I'm like, yes, like these small tweaks that you can't fully use yet, but I see what they're lining up for and what they're setting up for. And mm. so, yeah, you're right. 17 is. Yeah. yeah if, for example, uh, when you talk about this, uh, signals, right now, signals or until V17 signals made not that much sense to migrate because there weren't real features behind them. It, it was just, let's say, in V16, they mm. introduced signals, it was right. building blocks, and this uh, wanted a lot of feedback from the community. And they got a lot. That's why V17 signals went stable, uh, just beside effect that had some uh, minor uh, issues that the team wanted to sort out. Mm. But most of it, now the building blocks are ready, and they're going to work on the next step is signal input, signal components. Uh, and these are going to be the real revolution with signals. Actually, uh, V17 introduced uh, something um, nice uh, that they call a local change detection. You know the, how change detection kind of works on Angular? It's like it starts from the root component and goes down to every component. Yes. And until V17, it wasn't possible to just refresh automatically just one component. It always, oh, oh, it always at least refreshed all the parents. And now you were able to refresh just one. That's what they call local change detection. It was introduced with uh, with um, v, V17. I argued with Mark that we should yeah. get rid of the term change detection. I, I and think he it's was, because <laughs> I was like, it's not change detection anymore, Mark. And he goes, mm -hmm. maybe semantically, but you're going to jack with the community if you yeah. just drop that term entirely. And I was like, okay, uh, fine. Fine. Uh, fine, fine. You know, Alyssa, I, I do agree <laughs> that probably when um, signal components are here, yeah. when zoneless uh, yeah. lands, that we lose the central scheduling with the NG zone, then probably it's not going to be change detection, but it's going to be something more uh, fine grained on a component. I don't well, know. Refresh. I just, I like when it's I hear one. change detection, I think these nodes right these nodes updating that's what like my brain immediately goes to but i guess we can rewrite the definition to be what's happening without zone js mm -hmm. but <laughs> i i like the thought of getting rid of that you know because if, <laughs> if i really think about it like i'm not setting out to write change detection to my app right i'm not that's not a feature that i'm adding i want the framework to do it 
So ideally, yeah. I would never even say the word change detection and, and Angular would just do it for me and I'd never have to worry about it. And I think we got yeah. in a situation as developers because we had to solve scenarios with change detection. Yeah. So as we get closer where we don't have to do it and, and Angular just does it for us, then ideally what you're talking about, Alyssa, is like we just wouldn't even talk about it. Yeah. We don't talk and about you, Bruno. We don't talk about change detection, <laughs> right? And, and you know what? I think it's even worse because the, the word change detection, it was introduced with AngularJS and was like synonym of bad performance. Yes, that's the thing. That's where I was like, Mark, exactly. we need to kill this term. Like, and and he was I'm like, I'm sure they have somewhere a small um, drawer with some words they <laughs> coined for the new change detection. It They need to have a, something new because yeah. it's going to be a new feature. It's going to be some kind of revolutionary for Angular, yeah. we need to drop change detection to just show that before before we had change detection, it worked kind of was, it, it was kind of easy to use the automated change detection, but the performance was poor. So now we've got this brand new feature. It's amazing and it's fast and it's easy to use because fast, but hard to use isn't great. And the team is want, wants to target something that's easy to use, and that's fast. I'm honestly that's... kind of blown away by, because you're talking about the performance improvements that a lot of these features are giving us. Yeah. And it's like the combination of them, right? Because yeah. it's like, okay, we're getting rid of our modules and that sped it up a little bit. And it's like, okay, now we're looking at one day being able to get rid of Zone.js entirely. That's going to be a big chunk. Now we have built-in defers that are super duper fast and you can like lazy loading on the fly in your template. So I feel like it's like this compounded thing. And it blows my mind that the team's able to build this like, I don't know, this renaissance, while also rewriting the learning path for beginners to make it easier to learn. Because I feel like the trade-off would be, look how much more powerful our framework is, but, you know, buckle in, it's going to be a doozy. And yeah, it's, yeah, good luck. Like, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, wait, they got both? Like, who, what voodoo yeah. magicians behind this? Because that... Yeah. Why do you think do you think they rewrote the um, the, the the tutorial with the for a dev? Mm. Uh, now it's powered by uh, you, you probably know the tool uh, Stackbits uses uh, web containers that allows you to run an Angular project within the browser without mm. installing anything, and um, it just works great. So now you can just go to a dev, select tutorials, it can start in a few seconds. You have a brand new Angular project, and you've got all the steps to start building. But a... not only that, you can download it in that exact, yes. like, yes. because there's so many times, I don't know why, but like dependencies are like Alyssa's biggest problem. And I'm just like, I don't know how to prove this to you or show this to you, but I freaking go to angular.dev, I build out my thing, I download it, and then I'm like, oh, that's, that's where I went wrong because I see how to get all the pieces together in the right way. It might yeah. even just be like, I messed up something in the Angular JSON or I don't have something downloaded that I should have, especially mm -hmm. when you're trying to work with RCs because I'm always like, what is this? What do, what do I need to do to get on that? Mm -hmm. And so, and I think um, Emma and Mark mentioned being able to share that one day. So like, you don't only have to like download it like and then share that out, but like just having a link to share, which yeah. I was like jaw drop moment because yeah. just the that's, learning that's, power. <laughs> that's what we can already do uh, when you do in StackBits. And mm -hmm. StackBits, uh, I love this tool because um, uh, as a maintainer, uh, when people open issues, uh, what's important, if I can go back to the contribution, if you want to contribute, you, you can not only contribute by uh, contributing code, but contributing issues, the issues you see, if we report them, you're helping the team improve the product. And if you open an issue and provide a reproduction, mm. this will accelerate really the, um, uh, how the team will be able to fix that issue. Mm. So having reproductions really important. And for that, like you said, some code that you can share directly, it's just amazing. And the tool, the team, uh, the StackBlitz team built, it's just awesome. It is. It's really fun. Uh, yeah. <laughs> if, for example, I, I synced uh, yesterday with one of the guys and uh, we updated the Angular starter uh, with V17. So mm -hmm. everybody can just go to StackBlitz, open a new project also, like on ADEV, but they can um, they can uh, save it, store it, and have a list of projects that are online and they can share to everybody. Oh, for example, awesome. maintainers with uh, four issues. 
So I know this conversation has been so amazing and enlightening, yeah. but I know you had a third topic and we've got 10 yeah. minutes left. Yeah. So do you want to okay. talk a bit about... Yes, uh, so I will, I, I will just do the, the transition on that. So uh, after all my contribution, the kind of the team noticed my contribution and came to me. I just wanted to understand why I was doing this. I would say I was, uh, wanted to know how Angle works and uh, I was also having fun. So I said, oh, okay, it's great, etc. The months went by, did some contribution. And at one time, it felt like they, I, I somehow gained their trust and they started to come to me uh, like, we have features, but we don't have the time. Mm. Are you interested on in working on one? And that's how I started. That's how uh, the team came to me and asked me if I wanted to work on uh lazy loading uh, for the animation module because you know the animation module is like a really heavy module like the numbers were like 60 kilobytes it's a big one and it wasn't possible to lazy load it easily i can show you some numbers yeah. I've, I've opened a small demo if I've got created smaller, it's a, 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 a repo, I start, um, a, um, a project I started uh, this afternoon. I just spin up the CLI, created a new project. Uh, you have an app component. Wait, I'll start from the main. You have the app component, get the config, config, you have all your providers. And for example, you got the router, you got uh, client hydration when you're doing SSR, etc. And the first thing you have to do when you use animation is to call provide animation. And by doing this, you eagerly load a huge chunk mm. of the animation module. And this means by doing this, you cannot uh, lazy load the animation module. That's quite heavy. And having uh, lots of bytes in the main uh, bundle slows down the start reduces the performance uh, loading uh, bootstrap and also has an impact a negative impact on the core vitals uh, lcp largest content paint uh, and the others so the question was how could we just um find a way to lazy load that code and maybe i won't go too technical because we don't have all the time but the thing is it's at the core of angular there was a service that we call the renderer that's responsible with communicating with um, the DOM. And we have two renderer in Angular. One that's basic, it's called the DOM renderer, and one that's the animation renderer. And this one, uh, the animation renderer, is the one that was able to understand the uh, all the, um, the animation code we have. So when you write animation with the animation module, here, you use some kind of trigger, a state, and you apply some styles. For example, if I start the app I just wrote, here I just have a, a small component that can open and close. And you see the style change, the height changes, the background changes, background from blue and yellow, etc. And we write all that. So all of that is just interpreted by the um, animation renderer. But the thing is that if you eagerly load that, you have the weight. If you lazy load that, it's just broken. It doesn't work. So we had to find something, a way to transition from the basic one that's always there to the animation one. And that's why we used, for the one who knows it, it's called the delegate pattern. And it allows you to switch from one implementation to another one. And with that, we were able to just shave off most of the animation. And right here, I don't know why. I don't see it site uh, pa, 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 pa. Uh, normally there should be the module that shows up let me check that does it change something or not up 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 if I go back that's what we have up up normally we see that when you start we start uh, our application we see the different bundles that are created and we should expect to see uh the name if not i will 
go to my blog, if you permit, I have an article I wrote about it, animation, and it's here. So what happens is you end up with something like that and you see that we have la uh, lazy chunk that appear and you see that, for example, the animation browser package appears in the lazy chunks and you don't have it anymore in the main bundle. So you reduce the size to improve the performance at bootstrap and the loading and everything. That's like you said uh, before, uh, Alyssa, uh, like the team attacked on every corner, how to improve the performance of the framework. And in V17, there's so much opportunities to reduce uh, the size of the bundle. Uh, to improve speed, for example, the deferrable uh, views also allows you to lazy load components. You've got now the animation module is able to be lazy loaded and you get SSR that uh, just speeds up the rendering because it's pre-rendered, etc., etc. So what we have here is like, we, you don't have one killer feature. You have five, tens of them to just attack, <laughs> improve the performance from every side. It's like you've got an enemy in the middle. It's like bad <laughs> and not, not bad. Angular wasn't that bad, but it's just you could improve it and the team attacked it from every side they could. And the results we see in V17 is like amazing and mm. it will get even better. For sure. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. If you want the, the technical details, I, can, I will probably share the link uh, following oh, yeah. the tweet you posted earlier, Alyssa. I will uh, send the, 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 the people on it. Uh, we uh, described all the technical uh, things that uh, that I need to I needed to handle to land uh, that uh, particular feature. That would be awesome. And I'll put it in the description as well yeah. uh, okay. for the video. Navid asked, have you enabled name chunks in <laughs> Angular.json? Uh, sorry? Uh, said so, uh have you enabled name chunks in angular yes Python? yes why uh, that's that's what you can see here uh, normally if you don't enable it you have like uh, random characters and uh, digits and here it's like the the name that uh, uh, that vid is enable to able to uh, to infer so you see that here uh, we have uh, that's the component that created open close and here you got the two modules that come uh, actually the two packages from angular got angular animation and you get the uh, animation browser and animation that's the two one that are not lazy loaded the the numbers you see the row sizes you see here is the um it's the dev version so without the uh the minification and the optimization enabled so it's much much smaller when uh, when you build it uh in a prod uh, in prod mode so quick question about the um, asynchronous loading of the yeah. animations module. Is that live in version 17 or is that coming in a future version? It landed, it landed actually in the early, in the early uh, betas of, uh, of, uh, of V17. So it was uh, finally landed in the, in the final in V17.00 uh, on Wednesday. Awesome. So uh, This has been such a fun episode, Matthew. Before we before we do picks of any kind, any yeah. other shout outs you want to do or things you wanted to mention in regards to uh, Yeah, I just, I'm so thankful that the team is so welcoming. So uh, I've always felt like I was a random, a random guy and uh, being able to contribute to, to a project. I consider like Angular is like, like one of the building bricks of the internet today. So being able to write a small part of it just feel awesome, yeah. and that's uh, it. Led me to to meet lot uh, lots of awesome people uh, this week at at the conference. Like people who came came to me, I did not know everybody. So, but uh, it's uh, it enables things. So I, yeah. I was just happy to to be able to be part of uh, a small part of that. That's awesome. it's, it's now that you realize that Angular is just a bunch of random guys and gals. Um, yeah, we were working on a very cool project. Uh, exactly, exactly. <laughs> so, guys, I'm really happy you uh, you had me. It's yeah. such a pleasure for me. You were the first one uh, I had in English, so uh, I hope I wasn't too bad. Out of the park, man! You did amazing. Yeah. Oh, thank <laughs> you very much. <laughs> is that is that a hockey hat? I guess I should it's say the, out, the, of, uh, out of the ring. It's the uh, it's the Anaheim. Uh, it's the Mighty Ducks of Anaheim. <laughs>
I'm a huge hockey fan. Uh, my my first hockey game was um, this year actually in Germany, oh. and it was oh, Germany. I was overwhelmed. They had like drums set up around yeah. the yeah. rink, like very was, very common in Europe. Very common. In Europe. I was like, what is happening? And the whole <laughs> audience was like beating their seats with the drums, and I was like, oh my god. <laughs> Where did you go? Uh, which part was it? Uh, it wasn't Berlin. Um, I'll have to, I'll have to look it up. I'll send you the yeah. game. I mean, it was, my son is now, he's four years old. He's now in hockey lessons because of it, because I was like, you need to get on in this magic. Like, it's, amazing. <laughs> it's an amazing sport. I love it. Mm -hmm. Uh, so do you have any picks, anything you want to shout out? It can be tech related, non-tech related, just something you want to highlight for this week. I don't know. I just want to say, be curious. Uh, it will lead you somewhere. Be curious. Mike, Justin, picks of any kind? I'm pickless. <laughs> the pickless, the pickless wonder. I think we all are. Justin, do you have anything to save our, save our? No, let's just, let's just have a great weekend. <laughs> yeah, excellent. Uh, enjoy your weekend, everybody, of course, of course. All right. Well, thank you all for tuning in. You've been a wonderful chat. Yes. Hello. Hello. Uh, you guys, you guys have been really sweet guys and gals. So thank you for tuning in and we will see you all for the next one. We've got quite the lineup. So check out our, you, our you have a Robin next week. Yes. You're all so very excited. All right. A word from our sponsors and then we're signing off. Bye everybody. <laughs> Bye. Angular air is sponsored by Kendo UI for Angular. We have over a hundred components built from the ground up in Angular or each framework and library that it's built for. So not only do we have Angular on the JavaScript side, but we have Kendo UI for React, jQuery, and Vue as well. And if you're on the .NET side of life, we have things for Blazor, Maui, WPF, and so much more. All of our libraries are themable, customizable, and of course come with killer professional support. So try it out for free today at kendoui.com.